Hi, welcome to, to this video. We're going to discuss during this video about exercises 1 to 4 of chapter 25, Production and Growth. This is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, most countries, including the United States, import substantial amounts of goods and services from other countries. Yet the chapter says that a nation can enjoy a nation can enjoy a high standard of living only if it can produce a large quantity of goods and services itself. Can you reconcile these two facts? Well, that's true. During the the first uh, ten principles of economics, we we know that the welfare of an, e an economy or a country it is strictly rela uh, like related with the capacity of the country of produce goods and services that's completely true however we know that there is another principle that says trade can make everyone better off so then this can be uh, accounted in net exports even even if United States is higher importer than exporter maybe the the other the this can satisfy the the capacity of economy to produce goods so for example maybe you need to import some inputs but you can make more valuable goods and they are consumed inside the country so then definitely uh, the point is like even if you are importing this can be used as a factor of production or this can be used as a part of increase of wealth for for total population so then this is the characteristic that even you are a higher exporter and the the point is like can make better situation for the nation so the second says suppose that society decided to reduce consumption what would this change affect economic growth so first uh so this is the second question but whatever so first uh the question of economic growth remember that this is the difference the percentual difference of real gdp from one period to another period naturally if the real gdp is higher than the than the previous period we are experiencing um positive growth otherwise naturally there is a negative growth so the point is like when we have reduction reduction of consumption so this c it goes down remember that the gdp or the total income is provided by consumption plus investment plus government expenditure plus net exports they naturally keeping all other variables constant then the income should uh, decrease as well so then we are talking that there is a negative economic growth and what groups in society would benefit from this change where groups might be heard so then at the beginning naturally uh, some families because higher savings can be uh, faced so then these families can experience like maybe a better uh, better welfare in the future or uh, the companies will be affected and then uh, families as well because remember the consumption it comes from the production of companies and then when there is a reduction of consumption then the demand uh, decrease and then when the, the demand decrease naturally companies adjust their production providing less goods and services into the market as a consequence you don't need too much people to work inside a factory inside the offices then you can be uh, you can impact in some way the unemployment and then naturally afterwards families as well 
can be affected. So this is like a cycle that can be uh, can hurt a lot the economy. Third, societies choose what share of their resources to devote to consumption and what share to devote to investment. Some of these decisions involve private spending, others involve government spending. Describe some forms of private spending that represents consumption and some forms that represent investment. The national income accounts include some tuition as a part of consumer spending. In your opinion, are these resources you devote for, to, to your education a form of consumption or a form uh, of investment? So, naturally, this is kind of a point of uh, first, we're going to have a look what happened, what is real, what is a fact. And the fact is like even different point of views, the accounting part is really clear. So this is a more related way of accounting. So for example, housing, you can think maybe a consumption, but this is considered more uh, this as uh, investment, for example, right? So then this should be this should be the case. And for example, this belongs to human capital, and then naturally you're investing in human capital it should be more related to investment. However, is measured most more about consumption. But naturally, because you are trying to perceive a higher income in the in the medium run and long run, this is naturally more related to investment. Describe some forms of government spending that represent consumption and some forms that gov represent investment. So, for example, when, when we talk about new capital to firms, to public firms, they are more related about investment and we are making more about consumption with goods and services um, to the normal use of the government. Naturally, this is more considered as a government exp expenditure. So, in your opinion, should we view government spending on health programs as a form of consumption or investment? Would you distinguish between health programs for the young and health programs for the elderly? Well, uh, this is considered more as about spending. Um, and naturally, this is, can be interpreted as some part of investment because when you are, you are paying for health programs, and pre some prevention to future illness that they can be, uh, you can in some way uh, just like roll out in some way. So some form of investment can be can be distinguished at the end of the day because you are avoiding paying future for treatment or pills or something that naturally is much more expensive then uh, when we talk about the young people this is more about investment because they are in the age that they are productive to society at least economically talking so then we can consider it more about investment and unfortunately just in the part of objective at uh, the early programs naturally we are talking more about retired people that they are not inside the workforce so then this is more about this is more about in terms of quality of life at the end of the day and the last question is about what is the opportunity cost of investing in capital? Do you think a country can overinvest in capital? What is the opportunity cost of investing in human capital? Do you think a country can overinvest in human capital? Explain. So when you naturally you face an opportunity cost of investing just in capital, you avoid uh, paying or cons make some consumption. And naturally, as well, when you're investing just in physical capital, you you cannot use these uh, those resources to human capital, for example. And naturally, because you're spending, you cannot put off uh, some money. Um, 
what is the part when we can consider there is an overinvest on physical capital? Remember the marginal productivity. So the marginal productivity is the output that you receive for uh, adding one unit of labor. So if you're you're adding one machine and the result is equal or lower than before, we are talking about over investment of physical capital. So then naturally natural the output uh, result difference should be negative. And then when the marginal productivity of human capital is negative is the same the same case and actually you can pave with this other like consumption of physical capital saving. So then this is naturally when we are talking about overinvestment. And the point is like uh, we are making like old people just starting, 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 starting a lot. But maybe after several, several years, this person is not productive anymore. And this person cannot recover all the studies or, or the knowledge that they have. So this is basically, obviously, as you have noticed, is like really subtle. You can discuss about different, different stuff. But this is main idea. I'm just like providing some sketch that you can make some, um, some arguments to these uh, questions, some interpretation. I hope it has helped and as always see you next video. Bye bye.